Good morning. Thank you for all attending. Uh, we have a wonderful showing today. I want to take time to acknowledge uh, NYSCOBA's executive board, who's present here with us today, uh, the brave correction officers both here in attendance and those that are working inside our facilities today, uh, Assemblywoman's uh, me many members of the Majority Assembly, Minority Assembly, uh, Majority uh, Senate, and the Minority in the Senate. Um, we're basically, today, we're here to discuss the deteriorating conditions in our correctional facilities since the enactment of the HALT Act last year. Specifically, we're here to discuss the women of NYSCOBA who have been impacted by HALT. Plain and simple, because of HALT, the incarcerated community knows there are no consequences for their actions. The state mandated data which shows significant increase of assaults after the enactment of HALT are unassailable. The numbers are what they are. But a disturbing trend the women of NYSCOBA are experiencing in the workplace is not specifically being tracked, and that's a problem. For more on this, I'd like to invite Correction Officer Christina King to the podium. Good morning. My name is Christina King. I've been working as a correction officer at Kaksaki Correctional and All Men's Max facility for nearly 16 years. One of the largest misconceptions of correction officers is that we're all six foot something, big hulking men. But that's not our reality. Most of the women you see standing up here behind me all work men's maximum security facilities. Statewide, there are over 3,000 of us patrolling the galleries and the cell blocks. In some of the largest facilities, we make up a third to half of the entire staff. We are tasked with the same responsibilities and expectations as our male counterparts. We respond to all incidences and we break up fights between rival gang members. If the incarcerated individual is reasonable, we're able to defuse the situation by reasoning with them. However, what HALT has done is stripped away any sense of reason within our certain individuals in the incarcerated community. HALT has emboldened the worst of the worst as President Powers stated, the incarcerated community knows there are no consequences for their actions. In what was arguably an extremely dangerous job, being a correction officer has gotten significantly more dangerous given the assault data over the past year. And as a woman, that's terrifying, but as an officer of the law, man or woman, it's extremely concerning. While the assault data has maintained by the state show a 30% increase in the assaults on staff since HALT, it's the incidences that don't get reported that's most concerning to us. The incidences that don't get reported have increased both in frequency and severity. The vulgar, sexually charged comments have increased. They are targeted, sexualizing, and seeking gratification. The long stares by an incarcerated individual who sees you as a target and not as an officer have increased. The brazenness of sexually charged attacks on our female officers have increased. It's terrible and it's time for the women in Iscoba to step out from behind the walls and fences and share our stories. I would like to call to the podium Officer Anna Vasquez, Kuksaki Correctional. Good morning, everyone. My morning. name is Anna Vasquez. I work at Kuksaki Correctional Facility. Um, back in 2018, an incarcerated individual, while performing my duty, sexually assaulted me. The incarcerated individual came from behind me and grabbed my breasts and my buttocks. When I turned around, I observed him standing behind me with an arm extended towards my direction. The fear that came over me was overwhelming. For a moment, I felt paralyzed. I then managed to separate myself from the area and call for help. I remember reporting to work the next day and feeling some sort of shame. I immediately started to have nightmares and at times I would feel his presence behind me. I then sought medical help. I was informed that I was experiencing PTSD. I was prescribed medication but unfortunately unable to continue with my treatment due to medication side effects. I must state that it has been five years from the incident, but the memory of that date is so ever present. Thank you. I would like to call to the podium Chloe Hayes, Green Correctional. Good 
morning, all. Uh, my name is Officer Hayes. I'm from Green Correctional Facility. I've been with this department now. We'll be going on seven years. When I took this job seven years ago, I took it to protect and serve the state of New York. I was given the training to do this, and I'm going to share my story with you because sometimes you have to put a face to the story so that the department and that the state understands what us women in corrections, what we go through on a daily basis. And so my story happened back in 2020 as I was working in Green Correctional, which is a medium facility. And in my dorm, an uh, incarcerated individual decided that he was not going to have a good day and he was going to make my day a bad day. And that day consisted of him uh, cornering me into a closet the size of a cell and him punching me several times in my face, which I had the pleasure of Albany Med stitching my face up and they did a very good job. Uh, him ripping my body equipment off, which would have been my radio to alert another officer or someone to help me, him ripping my shirt open to take my camera off. And so at that time, as he proceeded to drag me and throw me around the room, it was another individual in the dorm that heard me screaming and decided to get this individual off of me. And I can tell you the blood and everything that I was exposed to having to take a cocktail because this individual had an infection and I too could have had that infection that day what that was incurable. Um, I'm glad that I'm here. I speak on half of everyone, uh, men, women in corrections because the public does not know what we go through on a daily basis. And the after effect of this was me almost committing suicide, me taking my personal firearm and trying to hurt myself. And if it wasn't for the department, my lieutenants, my sergeants, who was with me to make sure I stayed with these people, to make sure that I did not commit suicide, uh, me having to take an infectious disease, uh, some, something that helped me to make sure that I didn't get what I could have been exposed to. Um, me having thoughts, bad thoughts every day was not a good thing. And so I'm grateful for the department that helped me get through this because I probably wouldn't be here to share my story. And I want the public to know this is what we go through. This is what you don't see. The pictures, the, the reports from the hospital showing what we've been going through. You don't see that on a daily basis. So I speak on behalf of everyone, and especially the women in this department. Thank you. These stories shared by my brave sisters is just a glimpse into what it's like being a woman working in New York State's prisons today. As a woman working inside these facilities, I can say the sense of my personal safety is all but gone. The HALT Act has stripped away any sense of repercussions for one's actions, and now, more than ever, we need the New York St State Legislature to step in, help up, and help us be protected. We have the right not to be sexually harassed at work. We have the right not to be sexually assaulted at work. We have the right to work in an environment where we're not used as sex symbols for someone else's gratification. Allow me the right to do my job to the best of my abilities and not be sexually traumatized in the process, just as you would any other person in New York State. Restore safety and security in New York's prisons. Thank you for listening. Please support this important legislation. President Powers. Thank you, Christina, and thank you to Anna and Chloe and, and others that have testified here, the brave women that work inside our correctional facilities, behind the walls and in our fences. Just as we have every, everyone's back inside the, the, the walls and fences of our correctional facilities, NICE-COBA will continue to fight for the safety and the well-being of everyone who works or resides inside the prisons. And in that fight, you need solid relationships with partners in the New York State Legislature who are willing to protect our members. I'm proud to be standing with many of them here today as they carry several pieces of legislation aimed at protecting our membership, in particular the women of NYSCOBA. I'd like to bring up Assemblywoman Stacy Pfeffer Amato to say a few words.
Good morning. My name is Stacey Pfeffer Amato. I'm a New York State Assemblywoman. I am chair of the governmental employees. I'm so honored to stand here with the brave women who are sharing their stories today to stand up to say that the abuse that they're receiving on the job is unacceptable. Where in a state could you stand, have a job that you're abused, sexually abused, and it's acceptable? It's not to me. And I want NYSCOBA, the women, men and women, to know that I have their backs, always. <laughs> Correction officer's job is to keep a prison and the prisoners safe, or the incarcerated people, as we'll say. But how can they do that if they're being abused? They're worrying about other inmates or, sorry, Thank you, incarcerated individuals, and I'm not laughing about that, at the risk of their own safety. They have families that they want to go home to, and they have every right to. If you work in a supermarket, you have protections if you're sexually abused. But in our prison system, not acceptable to me. I just want you to know that I'm here to support any piece of legislation, because as the chair of governmental employees, the employees of this state will know they're protected. I want to thank Mike and all the leadership for bringing this bill forward, and I'm proud to be a sponsor on it. Thank you. I'd like to have Assemblyman Weprin say a few words. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, I chaired the Correction Committee for six years. Uh, I now uh, chair the Insurance Committee, but I'm still committed uh, to protecting uh, the men and women uh, who work in, in the correctional system. Uh, first of all, I want to state at the outset uh, that uh, it takes courage uh, for these women and correction officers uh, to come forward uh, and, and tell their stories, and, and I want to thank you uh, for your courage uh, to come forward. Uh, I've personally witnessed uh, sexual harassment uh, uh, in, uh, at Rikers Island in this particular case. Uh, it, it, it's, when I found out uh, that it was only a misdemeanor uh, to uh, sexually assault and sexually harass uh, a correction officer, I was shocked. I really thought, uh, you know, it, it, it was a felony. Uh, that, that's when I introduced a bill, I guess about a year or two ago, uh, to, uh, to make it a felony uh, for the first time uh, for sexually uh, harassing and assaulting. It's amazing with the Me Too movement how uh, sexual harassment uh, is illegal in every workplace, it seems, except for the correctional system and, and local jails. And that is not acceptable, totally unacceptable. There's obviously sexual harassment, but many of these women at local jails or state facilities are actually experiencing sexual assault. And it seems that once a person is incarcerated, they feel uh, that there are very few consequences uh, for them, uh, and that should not be the case. So uh, at the very least, uh, we have to pass uh, my legislation uh, to make it a felony, and uh, I will continue to fight uh, over the next uh, four weeks or, th or three weeks, whatever the period of time uh, of the session that's left uh, to get this over the finish line. Thank you. I'd like to have the Senator sponsors, uh, Senator Scarcella Spanton, speak on it. Good morning, everyone. I just first and foremost wanted to thank Christina, Anna, and Chloe for sharing their stories today. And their stories are not uncommon. I have heard this time and time again from various different correction officers that they are experiencing this. This is such an important piece of legislation that we're working to push. Just like as we're walking through these halls here in Albany, we have protections. These correction officers deserve the same protections as every other workplace and we will do everything in our power to make sure that we get this done. I've heard some pushback to this bill, and I want to remind you that these are women who go to work every day and go home with the trauma that they experience in their workplace. If we're standing up for women in all workplaces, this needs to be won, this needs to pri be prioritized, this is common sense, and I will do everything I can to work with my colleagues. We have colleagues from every side of the aisle here 
to get this over the finish line. I thank the women here for sharing their stories. It's an, it's an example of bravery and courage, and we will do everything we can to be there for you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Assemblywoman Carrie Warner. Thank you, Mike. I'm Assemblywoman Carrie Warner. I represent the 113th Assembly District. And on several of the prison tours that I have been on in the last year, I can tell you that I witnessed the kind of sexual harassment that the women corrections officers are facing in our facilities. It is not acceptable. When we, when we run a correction facility, we take responsibility for making sure that everyone who walks in, whether they walk in for a period of incarceration or they walk in for a day of work, that when they walk out, they are whole and healthy and they are ready to live their full life. And what I have seen and what you have heard today is that the women correction officers who make up an increasingly large percentage of the workforce in our correctional facilities are not leaving their workplace whole and healthy and able to live their best life. This is unacceptable. We must do better. We say we stand up for the women in the workplace. This is a state workplace, and we need to stand up for these women. There must be a consequence to harassing women in the workplace. And I don't care whether incarcerated, <coughs> whether our um, prisons are special kinds of workplaces. They are special kinds of workplaces, but that is no excuse for, for permitting this kind of harassing behavior for our state workforce. We must stand up for these women, and I am committed to making sure that they have a safe workplace so that when they go home at night to their children and their families, those, fa those children and, and their families know that their mother is right there with them, whole and healthy and able to be a full participant in that family's life. Thank you so much for being engaged in this topic. Thank you to all of my colleagues. Thank you to the women who have stood up so bravely and shared their stories. This is something we must do, and I'm committed to making sure that we do do it. Thank you. Now, Assemblyman Billy Jones, former employee of the Department of Corrections Community Supervision. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, and I'd like to uh, Thank you, Ann Nyskoba, for uh, bringing attention to this legislation that we have. Uh, I sit here, or I stand here, as the only member of the state legislature that has served for over 20 years in a correctional facility. I was a correction officer for 20 years. And I'd like to, uh, you know, just say those stories that you heard from women colleagues of mine should reverberate many times over with you because we stand here and we say that women and men in a correctional facility that go to work every single day deserve dignity and respect in their workplace. I don't think that's too much to ask. I want to thank them for their stories, their heartfelt stories. Thank them for their bravery for coming forward. But honestly, it shouldn't have taken that. It shouldn't have taken that for the legislature to act, for the state to act, to protect people within our facilities. We have made many steps through the past few years to protect the incarcerated in our facilities, which I am for. But when they have more protections than the women and men that go to work in those facilities every day, we should look at ourselves and say, what the hell are we doing here? Honestly. I will only say that the HALT Act has deteriorated many working conditions within these facilities. And I will say that our men and our women, and thank you women for those stories, should be able to go to work every single day and not have to worry about first being harassed, second being assaulted, 
and third, being sexually assaulted in your workplace. Can you imagine? We should do better. We need to do better. We need to do more. Thank you again for coming here and shining a light on this very important piece of legislation. We should even go further to protect the individuals that go to work every single day in our facilities. Thank you for being here. I want to thank my colleagues as well. Assemblywoman Jamie Williams. Thank you so very much for having me here this morning with my esteemed colleagues as we fight for Nice Cobra and New York City Corrections, everyone who is working in the correction facility. I want you to take a look behind me. So many men and women fighting for this cause a bipartisan, common-sense approach, because this piece of legislation matters. This act of behavior should no longer be pacified, and justice for all females should be universal. Universal. There is no way a female should be going to work and having to put their back against the wall and be living in fear. They are mothers. They are sisters. They are wives, they have families. And the bad actors who are against this bill, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Today we stand in solidarity to protect our men and women who wear that uniform day in and day out to serve our great state. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. In closing, I just want to point out that Mother's Day is right around the corner. Mother's Day is an extremely important day to take a moment and appreciate all the women in your lives. I'm very lucky to be surrounded by so many caring women who are not only amazing mothers, but incredible people. And you heard that today in their testimony. And when I think about how much our women officers have endured on the job, the stories that you've heard today, as well as the ones I hear across the state, is very upsetting to me in the board of NYSCOBA. These women deserve better. Whether they are mothers or not, they deserve better than what the state is giving them. And I know we are not going to stop fighting for these women here today, those who are patrolling the hallways and cell blocks right now. And I hope that their message and our message is being heard by the people who can actually do something about it. I would, like to, I would just like to thank again the brave men and women of NYSCOBA not only standing with me here today, but also those of, the, the, those of whom are working long, grueling hours in our facilities, enduring some of the most violent conditions in history I've, that I've experienced in my 30 plus years. And again, I'd like to thank the women of Correct of NYSCOBA that stand and serve. It took time out of their day and their families and their loved ones to come and share their stories, to push to get this vital legislation passed. And again, I'd like to thank our partners in the state legislature who came out in droves today for us. We're greatly appreciative of that. With that, I'll close. And with any questions, I'm happy to entertain them. I'm sorry. How many bills, how many bills they do? Well, it'll basically make it, a, it'll bring it from a misdemeanor, you know, it'll, it'll be a more serious offense for any sexual harassment or sexual uh, assault inside, a, in, inside the correctional facility. You know, it's no different than to be a crime on the street. You know, so we're, we're looking to get that to protect the women that work inside our facilities that are, that are harassed and, and potentially assaulted and, and, uh, and groped on a pretty much a daily basis. And is it one bill or multiple? It's one bill. It's, there's companion bills in both the Assembly and the, uh, and the Senate. You pushed for the repeal of the Hold Act. How is this part of that? There's no, there's no consequences for any of the actions that, that, that are 
perpetrated inside the facilities by the incarcerated individuals. There's, there's, you know, there's, there's just no consequence for their actions. There's consequences on the streets for criminal activity, yet inside our penal system, inside our correctional systems now, there are no consequences for their actions. The HALT Act is a failure, plain and simple. We, we've got support on the, on the minority side, uh, you know, and, and we've made headway with uh, some of the legislature and, 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 and the majorities, uh, you know, but, um, you know, I believe Senator Steck had a bill that just got tossed out of, out of committee uh, about a week ago, you know, to repeal the HALT Act. We're willing to have those conversations. The problem that all stemmed from HALT is when it was first enacted and brought in, you know, they, they spent hundreds of millions of dollars on infrastructure and programs. They don't have the staff to implement it. They didn't have the, 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 the infrastructure in place to implement it uh, upon the date of it. And we warned them that it wasn't going to work. And they never brought the stakeholders to the table to have any discussion related to HALT. And with that being said, it, you know, they, rammed it, they rammed it through. And uh, now we're dealing with a uh, significant rise in violence, uh, assaults on staff, vicious assaults on staff. We've had, we had two homicides in April of last year. You know, HALT started in April 1. We had two homicides in the month of April. We had two homicides in the department in the last three years prior to that. They, they just know there's no consequence for action. When you say that that threat also affected first last year, I know some of the stories shared today were uh, incidents that happened before HALT took effect. Mm -hmm. Have you seen a difference in the number of sexual assaults? Or I can only imagine it's increased. I mean, you know, it's, it's a very difficult topic, and that's why these brave women it's much, probably much worse, and that's why it's important for these women who, who are brave enough to come share their story. Some, some people don't want to rehash that. You know, we're grateful for the fact that they came and, and rehashed that in, in, in their lives. And, you know, we, we don't, uh, you know, I mean, God, you know, this, this, this government ran a governor out of town, for Christ's sake, for, for all of it. And, you know, and, and, and it's apparently a, a, a applauded in the correctional facilities. No, they're, 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 it's, all, it's all completely watered down. It's, listen, you know, the, the problem is, is you, you, they, they think that they're removing these individuals when in actuality the same two individuals could be housed in the same program in that very unit. And, and you know, the, these, these aren't dark dungeon cell-like material. You know, they're, they're well, it's better, it's well lit. Uh, it's, they're well lit areas. They have more services in a day than, than an inmate in general population. What of the inmate, uh, the incarcerated individual in the general population that's abiding by the rules, not creating violent acts, and are looking to rehab themselves to be a better member in society when you've get, when you spent hundreds of millions of dollars on approximately 1,500 individuals who can't get along? Thank you all for coming today. Thank you to the women.